Nice to have you with us here Wednesday, the 16th of May. And I want to jump right in. we got a lot to get to today. We do have a Woj bomb to discuss involving your Pistons. We'll get to that at 445. We must address what took place last night. Um, I've got so much to say about this, this, the latest LeBron drama. So I'll just go down my list. I don't have a overriding question for you. I want you to react to what I'm saying or give me your thoughts. But um, last night, it, it was embarrassing, to be honest. A 107-94 loss, another double-digit loss to a Celtics team that really has no business doing this. Now, here's my issue. This is the conundrum I, I have had with LeBron. I have now. I'll probably have the rest of my life. I know from a talent standpoint as a basketball player, he's the greatest player I've ever seen. Okay? From a talent standpoint, from the gifts he was given, 6'8", 6'9", 260 pounds, a physique that's out of a comic book, abilities that you just don't see. As a basketball player, talent-wise, greatest player I've ever seen. I love his skills. I loathe his personality. And last night it was on full display. Now, he comes out in Voltron mode, puts up the 21 in the first quarter, Goes out assertive. He was he hit a couple of threes, a full two steps behind the line. You go, okay, LeBron's going to get 60 tonight. But then, kind of disappeared. Now, I know the LeBron defenders will go out and say, but he hit Jason Tatum's shoulder. Look, he got checked out, and I agree with Mark Jackson. You're on the court. You're cleared. Nobody wants to hear you cry. So I don't want to hear. It. He puts up an unbelievable stat line that if you look at it alone, you go, damn, he had an unbelievable game. But here's my problem, and I don't know if I'm being fair. In fact, I might be unfair. But this is the weird space you operate in with LeBron James. That team quit last night. The second half, they decided we're not going to guard a soul. We're not going to rotate. We're not going to close out. And the Celtics, on the other hand, the Cavs only had three uncontested shots in the second half three total you couldn't see teams play more differently the Celtics are all effort all the time defensively getting up in their ribs really getting after it here are the Cavs and you you wouldn't even know if this is a game in the middle of January much less the Eastern Conference Finals is it wrong that I blame LeBron for that not solely but I do expect LeBron to grab somebody by the throat and say, get off my court. Give me your best or get the hell off my court. I mean, J.R. Smith looked like he just got done hitting a doobie. Get off my court. You got guys out there. Your starting backcourt gets outscored like 36-3. to three. Yeah, LeBron is one of the greatest players I've ever seen, and I've said it, I don't think. Again, objectively, I don't believe we could say Jordan's clear-cut better than LeBron, but these are the moments I come back to and I go, damn it, LeBron. Second half of that game, your world is crumbling around you, and he seemingly allows it. And even worse, giggles in the postgame. I thought he was embarrassing in the post game. I know what you're going to say. This isn't the 80s or 90s. This isn't life or death. I got kids, man. I get all that. You cannot, after doing the height of arrogance in game one and saying, I have zero concern, my concern level is zero, do not come out after falling down 0-2, losing by double digits again, having your team damn near quit on you, and start giggling with Kevin Love up there in the press. You I cannot. I'm fine. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Can't do it. That's the reason I have such a hard time with him. That's why he's such a polarizing figure. Talent-wise, I know in my heart he's the best player I've ever seen. But personality-wise, or whatever fills that space where there's supposed to be a warm, beating object in your chest... That's what I question. I can't take what last night ended up as. I don't care about the numbers. Yes, he came out assertive. But, man, you play damn near 48 minutes, and you're 6'9", 260, 
and you're the best athlete on the floor, geez, you know what? You're going to rack numbers. We know that. I just have such an issue the Cavs are quitting. They're not playing as hard as the Celtics. They don't want it as bad as the Celtics. And LeBron, doesn't the fish rot from the head? That is where I struggle. So that's issue one. And if you think I'm being unfair, I am more than happy to be called out. I don't, I'm being honest with you as to how I process this stuff. I know in my heart he's the best player I've ever seen, but I'll be damned. I can't like him. And it's moments like these that make me really question him. I want to see a guy who bleeds to win. Ultimately, as players, you don't have a lot of accountability, right? You make unbelievable money whether you're terrible or great. But the great ones are accountable to the most powerful thing of all. You have to be accountable to the winning. The winning and the cost associated with it. Are you accountable to what it takes to win? Last night, you just see LeBron blank stare on the bench. How was LeBron on the bench at the start of the fourth down seven? You should have ripped Ty Lue's head off and punted it into the concourse. Get me in the game. I mean, how how are you down? And you're not out there taking every shot. That's what makes me question it. That's why I, I never question Jordan's accountability to winning. Now, yes, nostalgia's perverted Jordan a bit. Jordan was insufferably difficult to play with. Jordan got coaches fired. Jordan had his weak moments. But he was unquestioned when all the chips were down and he had matured and he had gotten a little bit of help. I never questioned how bad he wanted to win. I should never question how bad you want to win. The problem is LeBron has more. He's got more in common with Kobe than he does Jordan. I've seen Kobe quit. I saw it in 08 against the Celtics. They were down three. The next time he took a shot, they were down by 50. He was pouting. I've seen him do it. I just hate how it looks. If the Celtics are a better team, fine. But go down swinging, man. Go down with blood on your jersey. And for the people who want to say, damn, he had a triple-double, what do you want? I want him to hold his teammates accountable. Be accountable to the winning. I I just, when you are LeBron James, fairly or unfairly, it falls at your feet. And I admit, in the midst of an unbelievable triple-double, some of you are not going to understand my criticism. But you are the leader. Everybody takes their cues from you. When that team says, we are not playing defense in the second half, and the Celtics go out and shoot 65%, and meanwhile, the Celtics are just straight-up rough riders out there. Every 50-50 ball, green and white. Diving into the stands, green and white. Playing with emotion and pace. And and, and it just, it is on LeBron. How can you allow J.R. Smith to go out there looking like he's high as a kite? J.R., if you're not into this tonight, great. Get the hell off my court. Why do I see LeBron sitting The team is down seven. The game is slipping away. Get in the game. When LeBron took shots or LeBron helped teammates with a pass or an assist, they shot about 60% last night. When LeBron wasn't involved, they shot about 25%. Get in the game. Now, part two, and I'll throw the number up because maybe I'm not being fair. But it's what I struggle with with LeBron. 248-539-9797. Part two, I've got to tell you, I thought Ty Lue embarrassed himself last night. Let me explain why. It goes beyond not having Kyle Korver in the game. But Ty Lue in his postgame remarks, I thought offered you a real window to the weakness. He made a remark in the postgame about the Celtics gooning it up. Let me let me get let me get this straight. J.R. Smith 
pushed Al Horford in the kidneys while he was in the air and tried to put him into the crowd. The Celtics are gooning it up. Really? The dirtiest play of the night was your guy. You had LeBron damn near take Tatum's head off on or Jalen Brown on a screen. Celtics gooned it up. Marcus Smart decided to hold J.R. Smith accountable after the dirtiest play in the game. I don't think that's gooning it up. Tristan Thompson fouls, knocks Marcus Morris to the floor, then barks something at him, and I don't know what it was. And Morris screamed in his face. The only people gooning this thing up are your guys. That was the cheapest ploy I've ever seen. You're crying to the refs. Now, here's what the Celtics are doing, Ty. The Celtics flat out want it more. They're playing harder. That's not sports radio cliche. That's fact. The Celtics are trying harder. That is why I cannot look at, at, at LeBron and say you're blameless no matter what the numbers are. Your job is to get the people around you to sell out to win. You know what LeBron looked like in the postgame laughing it up with Kevin Love? He looked like a guy who knows he's leaving, knows this team is dysfunctional, and has said, you know what, F him. I'm sorry. I got a hard time with that. Maybe that's my age showing. Maybe it's because I'm a kid of the late 80s and and early 90s. Maybe I'm out of touch. But I defend today's athlete all the time. I defend the power they wield. I defend the money they make. I love the fact LeBron speaks his mind on issues that are on and off the court. But I'll be damned if I stand here and defend this. You need to convince me of one thing and one thing only, that you care. That if you're leaving Cleveland, which it's your prerogative to do, that you leave and you left it all there. You know what? No, the numbers aren't good enough. And you know what? This is where that Larry Bird quote really does ring true. If I want to have fun, I'll play with LeBron. If I want to win, I'll play with Kobe. I don't feel like LeBron is bleeding to win this. And you know what? No, I don't know what it's like to make 35 mil a year. I don't know what it's like to have a net worth of probably half a billion dollars. No, I don't. Maybe it changes you. Maybe LeBron can't care. Maybe it's not in him anymore. Maybe the fact that LeBron hasn't led a normal life makes him that different. The fact that he hasn't been a, quote, normal kid since he was probably the age of 12. That he was always an intergalactic talent. That he always had people wanting to do for him. That he always had the power to dictate his lot in life. Maybe I can't expect him to be the alpha dog that I think he needs to be or should be. But I'll be damned. I can't watch a team quit around a legendary superstar. Show me where a Bill Russell team quit. Show me where a Magic Johnson team quit, a Jordan team quit. I I just, I can't do it. If they lose this series, I don't blame LeBron. I understand he does not have the help he should have. I understand that Kevin Love is a bit of a fraud. But man, the laughing in the post game, blank stare during the game, a complete malaise over that team as the game is slipping away, not a lead. Not a lead slipping away. The game is slipping away. And LeBron isn't being punked by one of his peers. The old Rick Pitino line, Larry Bird ain't walking through that door. Kevin McHale ain't walking through that door. It's not Kobe in his prime doing this to LeBron. Or Dwayne or Melo or or pick a superstar. This is a daycare center. This is, this is a collection of guys that are talented, but make no mistake, there is no one on that court on LeBron's level. You have a rookie in Jason Tatum leading the Celtics in scoring, a second-year guy in Jalen Brown, a third-year guy in Terry Rozier, a collection of castaways. 
I mean, Marcus Morris, tough guy. Aaron Baines, tough guy. Let's not kid ourselves. Now, Al Horford, hey, he's a good ball player. But Al Horford on a championship team is a fourth scoring option. And Al only gave you 15 and 9 last night. Again, don't delude yourselves. LeBron is getting punked by a bunch of guys that aren't on his level. If this is him going against the Warriors, I don't say a whole lot. If it's him going against a team that has, you know, a couple guys that together are greater than him, fine. But it's not. They're down 2-0. They're losing by double digits. They've gotten their asses kicked in the second half of both games. And while they weren't down by 29 or whatever it was like game one, you're losing by 13 in the playoffs. That's not a game. Celtics are holding the ball late just to give it back to you because that's how damn pathetic you are. That's not how all-time greats get played out. I mean, the Celtics are just, as Mark Jackson said it on the broadcast, they're just saying, how do you want it and where do you want it? Because we're going to give it to you. You want a picnic in the park? Cool. We'll give it to you. I'll even unpack the basket for you. That's not how the all-time greats go down. I'm not trying to blast you guys, Sully. We'll get your thoughts momentarily. I'm not being unfair to LeBron. I don't think I've insulted him at all. But I'll be damned. I cannot tolerate that postgame. And I cannot tolerate a team that is quitting effort. There has to be accountability for LeBron on that level. There must. That's that's the game, man. That's the part that money can't replace. That's the part that you, the leader, the, the you are the franchise. You see a guy around you lollygag, you punch him in the nuts. I won't have it. Get off my court. I'm LeBron James. Bitch, you're George Hill. Get off my court. Oh, you think it's a game tonight? Get the F off my court. That's what LeBron should do. And instead, he's sitting there on a bench. Down seven. Minute into the fourth quarter. I'll be rest be damned. Celtics are 37 and 0 when they're up 2-0 in their history. 37 and 0. They've never lost a playoff series up 2-0. I got news, LeBron. You're too old to try to win four out of five. Down seven. Early fourth quarter, you know what the all-time greats do? Put up another 21. I don't care about what you did in the first quarter. That team needed you. I don't know. I'm torn on it. 248-539-9797. Let's talk about it. And maybe I didn't express it clearly enough. To hell with Ty Lue. Celtic gooning it up. Let me tell you, when it comes to politic and the refs, you're no Phil Jackson. Ty Lue sounded like an idiot. Sure, he's a very nice man, and he's probably a better coach than any of us give him credit for, but in that one comment, just like things I've said in my life, he sounded like a boob. J.R. Smith tried to send a man into the crowd, the dirtiest of all plays. By the way, how did he not get ejected? This is a league. You, you, could, you could hit somebody with a snot rocket they throw you out of a game. J.R. Smith threw him into the crowd. Nah, it's not Mikhail on Rambus, but that's today's version of it. 248-539-9797. We hear from the president of the LeBron James Ding Ding Love Fest Association, Michael Sullivan the third next 971.